Hello and welcome to another episode in the GD Script Fundamental tutorial series. In this episode, we'll be taking a quick look at strings. So basically, a string is any value contained inside double quotations. Anything inside double quotations is called a literal string value. However, I wanted to go just a little deep into how strings are stored in memory address. Strings behave like an object in memory address, almost similar to an array. The only difference is you can't call certain functions in a string like you would in an array, but they are similar. A string value has a character, a single character stored at a specific memory address, and in memory address, they are consecutively stored in memory. So basically, in our address, our capital S is at 20, our T is in 21, and we just keep going in order, almost like an array. And on top of that, they do have indexes. For example, the first character in your string value is at index 0, and the last value is at the last index position, in this case 5. One thing you may not have known is that you can loop your string variable. So in this case, if our string value has the word string, we can loop it, for example, for every character in our string value, print out that character, and it will print individually each individual character inside our string value. On top of that, just like arrays, because strings behave almost like arrays, we can indicate an index position in our string value. For example, if we want the first letter of our string, we just do string value, square brackets with the index position. In this case, we're using zero, so the first position in our string, which is the capital S. String values come with a lot of methods. However, I just wanted to go over a few you may use in your programming journey. First is the insert method. So you get your string object followed by the dot notation followed by the insert method. The first argument is the index position and the second argument is a string value. Basically what you're doing is you're inserting the string value into the index position and then pushing everything else to the right. Next you have the length method and just like an array it will return back the value and just like an array it will return back a literal integer value that represents the length of your string. In this case our string will always be the last index position plus one so in this case we will get back six. And lastly you may want to split your strings. Keep in mind the split method cannot split your strings by character. You do have to declare a delimiter. For example if your string values are separated by commas you can use the comma character as your delimiter and you will split your string by that delimiter and return back an array containing your new values. However, if you want to split a string by its character, it's best to use a for loop. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some code. As you can see here on our first line of code, we have a variable called string value and it is assigned a literal string value with the word string. I've also created a second variable test. Basically this line to show you that even when we assign our string value to test, we're not pointing to the same memory address location. I mean, I want to show that even though we point to the same value, if we were to change test, we will not change the value inside string value, unlike an array. Now, in our ready function, you can see here in our first line, we are looping through our string value for character in string value. However, just note that you can loop through strings in your for loop. And as you can see here, we're using some methods provided to us in our string object. The length method will return back six. Our split method and our delimiter is nothing. So that just basically returns everything back into the index position one, or rather zero, the index position zero to our string variable. So our variable will contain an array of length one containing our entire string value. And lastly, we are inserting a string into our variable string insert. And basically what we're saying is insert the new string value new with a space and insert that into index position zero. So now our string value, which is string, will now say new string or new space string. And over here, we print that out to screen so you can see what the new values consist of and what they look like. Strings are quite complex, but pretty straightforward once you figure out how they behave in memory. 
and how you're able to use methods provided to you with the string object in GDScript. The string object comes with a lot of options provided to you, so feel free to check that out in the GDScript API documentation on the Godot Engine website. That's all I have for you in this episode. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for clicking the like button. Thank you for subscribing. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Have an amazing day.